Good morning and welcome to Unity of Dallas. My name is Carla Edwards and happy Valentine's Day. Here we are, we're all bundled up, we're all snug as a bug in a rug and we just know that it's Valentine's Day and nothing can cancel love and nothing can stop Valentine's Day from arriving. And we are so filled with love that right now, let's just take a little moment to just spread our love to all of the people whose lives were impacted by the terrible pileup in Fort Worth this week. We just radiate our love to all of those people. And we also radiate our love to all of the people whose lives have been impacted by the COVID pandemic. James, Tyler, people of our community, we know, we understand that the love of God can fill every heart and fill and provide for every human need. Today, we are celebrating Valentine's Day in a different way. So let's start with our opening statement. Together, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God, the good, omnipotent. Well, like I said, we are celebrating Valentine's Day in a different way, and we have a wonderful song that Dottie has brought to us. And Dottie, I hope you're singing, okay? And this is called, I Love Myself the Way I Am. comfy and warm in your spaces. I'm Lisa and I'm your chaplain this morning and I want to remind you that chaplains are praying for us all the time. We pray every day as a chaplain team and if you'd like to have a special prayer you can contact us through the website and someone will return your um, request and pray with you or you can just leave a prayer request and we'll be praying for you and sending your prayer request on to Silent Unity. Now I invite you all to say with me our daily word. And today's daily word, we say together, heart expression, you are dear to me. I hold you in my heart. And with that heart energy of love, I invite you to enter with me into a prayer of healing for one another. Jesus's command to us was very explicit, love one another, love each other as you love yourself. And so we gently close our eyes and release ourselves into our heart space. I invite you to begin to breathe into the heart. Maybe put your hand on your heart. And as you breathe into your heart, we begin to synchronize with our mind. We begin to release our thoughts. And as we synchronize mind and thoughts, we enter into that Holy of Holies, that place of knowing what we know, of knowing what we are, of knowing the truth, 
that there is only love. There is only love. And in that truth of knowing that there is only love, we see healing. We see physical healing. We see mental healing, emotional healing. We see each and every person in our congregation, in our city, in the world, as whole, perfect, complete spiritual beings of truth. And seeing each person as truth and as love, we are reminded that there is only love. We wrap the world in that idea of love, that perfect idea of the all that there is that is never absent, that is always present, no matter what our circumstance might seem like. We release anything that is not of good, of not of God. Remembering the love. We breathe into the love. Knowing that we are cared for, that every need is met just in the perfect, right, divine time. We are love and we are loved and we see our world enveloped in that love, healed in that love. And we are grateful. We bring our grateful hearts together to say, Amen. It is done. And so we let it be. Thank you, Spirit. And thank you for praying with me this morning. Have a wonderful service. And Thank you, Lisa, for that beautiful meditation. Your words are always so poetic. They inspire me each time. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and we love you. Well, today is Valentine's Day and we are going to be discussing all kinds of things about love. And we are going to, I've always had kind of a problem with Valentine's Day because it really celebrates that wonderful romantic love. And for those of us that are in a romantic love relationship, it is super fun. But unfortunately, there's a whole group of people that are not in romantic relationships. And so it leaves out people. And that always made me feel terrible. So I decided long ago, that Valentine's Day should be a celebration of universal love, where we can look at each other, no matter what kind of relationship that we're in, and celebrate love within ourselves and within other people. Well, what does the Bible have to say about the definition of love? We're going to go to the very famous quote from 1 Corinthians 13, and it says there that love is patient, love is kind love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude it doesn't insist on its own way and it's not irritable or resentful it does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth it bears all things believes all things hopes all things and endures all things Mm, that's a pretty wide definition of love, isn't it? it? It encompasses a whole area of being. Well, the Greeks had different words for love, too, and they had nine different words. They couldn't fit it all into one word. And so they had like the word for the Greek word for passionate romantic love was eros. We're very familiar with that term. Or philia which is the Greek word for authentic friendship, like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And we're familiar with agape, which is universal love, the love of God. We might not be as familiar with storge, which is familiar love, the love that we have for our family. Or ludus, which is playful love, like what we have when we play with our dogs and our cats and our kids. There's the kind of love that's mania or mania, and that's that obsessive kind of love that goes on the, the edge there a little bit. Pragma, 
which is a committed love, enduring love that lasts forever. And philosia, which is love of self. And that's the area that we're going to concentrate on today. Now, the Greeks had said that there were two forms of philosia. And one of them was a very unhealthy version, and that is the version of self-conceit, self-obsession, where the world just revolves around oneself, or narcissism. And this is where we see the seven deadly sins come in, wrath and envy and all of those emotions that can turn into something that brings us down. But the Greeks also said that there is a, a different kind of love, philosia, that is talking about healthy balance within ourselves. And the Buddhists call that self-compassion. We can have compassion for ourselves. And once an individual has a deep understanding of how to love oneself, then and only then does, do we have the strength and the courage and the capacity to love somebody else. And this is a catalyst that comes from the very soul because we understand we can't give what we don't possess. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second commandment is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. And actually you see that figure, that Bible verse go all the way through the New Testament. It's in all of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and it's in Romans as well. Uh, one of my favorite Bible passages about love comes from 1 Peter 4 that says, above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> it's like fresh paint. You can start all over. Love makes things brand new. <laughs> well, instead of today talking about the love of self, we're going to refer to a term called self-love. And that term was coined by the beatniks of the 1950s. And the beatniks were the predecessor to the hippies and the countercultures of the 60s and the 70s. And they defined self-love as regard for one's own happiness or advantage. And we're going to also talk about the term self-care today and that is different in that self-care regard is regarding an activity it's a conscious act one takes to promote their own physical mental and emotional health and it's an action it's a purposeful engagement in strategies that promote healthy functioning and enhanced well-being and so uh self-care Self was initially started in the medical community uh, uh, to try and deal with patients that were mentally ill or people that were in long-term care facilities, trying to teach people how to brush their teeth, how to take a bath care for themselves, an education program. Uh, but then that term self-care uh, was applied to high-risk professions like uh, trauma therapists, EMT professionals, people that had a lot of stress in their professions because they understood that no one can adequately help anybody else without taking care of themselves. That's a prerequisite. Now, back in the day, the Black Panther, you remember the Black Panthers? I remember the Black Panthers, the images of them all dressed in black. They had their black berets on with the guns. They were standing in military formation. But uh, that really does a disservice to them now that we're talking about Black History Month because really the Black Panthers uh, have not been recognized for their lasting contributions to public health. 
the Black Panthers were champions of health as a human right. And first for the African-American population and then for the entire poor population of the country. And they said that poverty, oppression, unemployment, lack of education and housing were causes of poor health. And they took that into the political environment to fight for those things for all of the people. And during that time, they opened 13 community health centers all across the nation. And they bonded together with women's rights activists to redefine what good health was, what the meaning of good health was. In other words, it wasn't just the absence of illness, but it was more about a quality of life. And that's when the term wellness was born. We can thank the Black Panthers and the women's activists for that. In fact, in 1979, Dan Rather, a, a famous newsman, spoke on the nightly news and said, wellness, well, there's a word you don't hear very often. <laughs> it's the ultimate in something called self-care. And that's when that term was born. And so why should we talk about self-care? today on Valentine's Day of all days? Well, it is my opinion uh, that it is more than a luxury. This is not something uh, that we dabble in uh, for enjoyment's sake, uh, that we have found out in our current time, in this time of pandemic, that self-care is truly necessary for survival. We've had to pay attention to our self-care, whether we're masking, who we're, how far we're standing away from people. It truly is bigger than just a luxury of something that we can participate in. And another reason that we're talking about self-care today on Valentine's Day is we are no less, my brothers and sisters, we are no less than children of God. We are sons and daughters of the living God. And our bodies are the temple of the living God. In Romans 8, 14, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God, those are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. That's an unbelievably powerful statement about who we are. And if we are children of God, that means that we inherited all that God is. God is the most powerful reality and power that we know of in our existence. And we are children of that. We are creators, my friends. We are, and we use the gifts that we inherited from our creator. Just look at the 12 powers, all of the things that we've been given, raw material that we get to work with during our lifetime. Just think about the power of imagination. We can, through thinking in our minds, create something in our minds and through action, through our own actions, bring it into manifestation in our physical world. That's unbelievable powers of creation. And think about the powerful of free will. We have free will to take whatever we are thinking about in our mind and decide to put feet to that and bring it into manifestation into our physical world. And think about the gift of love, our ability to reach out and be with other people and to love our world and to love each other and the gift of wisdom, of strength. And we were given the power of release. Think about that. We have been given the power to let go of anything that doesn't serve us anymore.
That's one of the gifts from God that we have. We have in our very hands the keys to live our very best life right here, right now. Not after the pandemic. Not when we get that romantic relationship, but right here and right now. And what we have, the gifts that we've been given by our creator, nobody in the world, we're authentic spiritual beings, nobody has exactly that combination of gifts that we have. And it is up to us to be able to develop those gifts and then pour them out into a world that is so needful of all of the gifts that we have. It says in Luke 12, for to whom much is given, much is required. And that means that we are required to develop that raw talent that we've been given by our creator. Look at the parable of the talents. There's the master and three servants. The three servants, the master gives them all talents. He gives the first one three talents. And the first servant goes out and he invests that and he comes back. He's doubled the talents. And the master says, oh, you good and faithful servant. And he gives the second one two talents. And the second one goes out and he invests that and he comes back. He's doubled his talents. He brings back four talents. And the master says, oh, how good and faithful servant. But the third one took his talent and was afraid. And he went and buried it in a field and he came back in front of the master and, and said, Master, I, I was worried somebody would steal my talent. And the master said, I gave you something and you went and buried it and did nothing with it. Thou unfaithful servant. And he cast him out of the mansion. We must develop our skills and our gifts that we have. Now, in the term, in the area of self-care, the beautiful thing about this, there is no perfect, there's no right way, there's nothing that says how we can establish our self-care and self-love practices and habits. Now, whether it's a bubble bath, a piece of chocolate cake, a workout, a walk by ourselves, anything that we decide then we the only thing we have to do is be intentional and purposeful and be fully present while we're doing that if we decide that eating a piece of chocolate cake is self-care and self-love for us then we take that chocolate cake and we put that fork in it we hear how the fork clatters the china and we put it up to our mouth and the aroma of the chocolate and the way it feels as we put that chocolate cake in our mouth and roll it around and swallow it and feel it go all the way down, loving every minute of that. That is mindfulness. And that's how we take teeny tiny little practices and make them large so that we can nurture ourselves and find ways to love ourselves. And there's lots of areas where we can apply the self-love and self-care habits and practices. For example, we're very well aware of the physical realm, things that we can do to better our physical being. Things like get, getting enough sleep, a diet that nurtures our body, exercise, we have to move around a little bit, stay moving and uh, the way we manage our health. This is part of the, our self-care. Are we going for those test screens that can tell us how to prevent serious illness? Are we taking the medicines that we're supposed to be taking? Are we following the advice of our doctors? Those are all self-care things in the physical realm. And there's things that we can do for our mental, for the mental realm. Are we keeping our mind active? Are we learning new things? They've shown that to learn a new language, it stimulates all different parts of our brains. It creates new synapses. Those are things that we can do to care for our mental self, our mental body. And then of course, 
There's our emotional body, our emotional system, and we can develop healthy ways to process our emotions. You know, the happy ones, they're fantastic, aren't they? You know, when we're happy, we can laugh and be joyful. But those ones that are a little bit stickier, sometimes we don't know what to do with that. Have you ever screamed into a pillow? I highly recommend that. If you're just in a place of frustration, you just take that pillow and put it in there and scream as loud and as long as you want, and you will be amazed how good you feel after just letting all that go, releasing it all. That's when we can prevent anger turning into wrath and one of those seven deadly sins that really are detrimental to our health. Now, and there's some self-care things that we can do with regards to relationships. Uh, we can set healthy boundaries. We can say no when there's things we really don't have time to do. When people ask us to do things, we have the right to say no. We can prioritize top three priorities of what it is to do that day and do those three things. That means we are always going to be doing the most important things for our lives. And there's self-care practices uh, that we can take to the workplace. We can set healthy boundaries there. We can develop, a, I don't know, a work wife, somebody that supports us as we are going through our work day. Another thing we can do is consult a more experienced college, go, in, go into professional development. We can turn off our email and our phone when the work day is done and really take a break from our work. Those are all ways that we can care for our professional self. Now, I have all kinds of ideas of little things that we can do to nurture and love ourselves, And this is on top of what we already know about, about meditation and prayer. Of course, we go within and release the rest of the world and find that love within ourselves. But in addition to that, I have a bunch of things that we can do that are easy to do, that don't take hardly any time, uh, that show how much we love ourselves. And the first thing that we can do is so easy, and that is develop a gratitude practice. It takes a, a tiny little fraction of a moment to say, oh, man, I am so grateful for the sun coming out. I am so grateful for flannel sheets and a down blanket. There are things that we can be grateful for throughout the day. Wake up and say three things that you can be grateful for during the day. Three things at night that happened that we can be grateful for. Take such a short amount of time. And then another thing that we can say, we can do, we can look in the mirror and say, I love you to ourselves. I love you. Have you ever done that before? You'd be amazed how good that makes you feel. <laughs> Another thing we can do that I think is very important is develop a forgiveness practice. Regularly forgive ourselves, forgive others, forgive the world. And by doing that, that is the point at which we can release all of the hurt. We're not condoning things, but we're not carrying that heavy burden around of unforgiveness that weighs us down. An easy thing to do is light a candle, spray some perfume on a little, on a little Kleenex and just breathe that. And it, it stimulates all kinds of great memories and beautiful scenes. You know, another thing I like to do is concentrate on beauty. There is beauty everywhere we go. All we have to do is just walk outside every morning, every evening. There is a new uh, landscape of artwork in the sunrise and the sunset just for us. But we have to go outside and find a way to partake in the beauty around us. Look into people's faces and
and see the beauty of who they are, that spark of light in each individual person. Find the beauty in people's faces. Another thing I like to do is thank, thank my body for all it does for me. Thank you, my feet, for taking me to all these wonderful adventures. Thank you, knees and hips, for bending and being so flexible. Thank you for all my gut bacteria that does all this stuff that I don't even know about and to keep my health at an optimum level. Thank you, beautiful voice, for communicating the love that I have for all of the people in my life. Thank you, beautiful eyes, for looking out and being able to perceive beauty. Thank you, ears, for music. We can thank our body and be grateful for all that it does for us. Another thing that we can do is get artsy. You can doodle, you know, get your colors out, play some music, get that journal out and write about your experience. That's another way to handle healthy emotions. Write about your frustrations, write about your loves, write about your dreams. You'd be amazed at what it can do if you see all of those things on paper. And another thing that I think is just really important is uh, let's be honest about ourselves. Let's be honest when we get kind of obsessive or judgmental. We can judge ourselves so very harshly. And when we judge ourselves, we judge everybody around us. Be cognizant of when we're being judgmental. Be cognizant of when we're comparing ourselves to somebody else. When we do that, we always fall short when we compare ourselves. And also be aware when we fall into a victim state of mind. It's so easy to do that. Uh, you know, when we believe in conspiracies, whether the conspiracy is true or not. It's a victim state of mind because we're always look behind our shoulder and thinking that there's something out there beyond our control that is doing things to us. That's the very definition of a victim uh, consciousness or a victim thought. Uh, be conscious of when we're doing that. And if we're in another thing that we can do is ask for help. If we're really in a low spot, have that number, have the phone numbers of friends that we can call. Don't suffer alone. Ask for help. Have that phone number there of a mental health professional if things really get dicey and call that person. Call our medical people. We don't have to suffer alone. That's something that we can do out of self-love for ourselves and care for ourselves. And then finally, we can plan. Did you know you can plan for a mystical, a, a peak experience? We can set an intention about having a peak experience and getting new insight about our lives. And what's involved with that is number one, we need to get away from our everyday environment. Plan to get in your car or plan to walk away at least 30 minutes away from your daily routine environment and take your journal or take your phone and record in there where you think you are, what are your dreams, where you want to go, what you think about God, and then just let it go and wait for that download to come about the direction and about the next steps and about a new idea about who you are. And that is how you plan for a peak experience. And only you, you and only you can do that. You don't need anybody else to do that. So finally, we can know that we are powerful creators and that each of us is responsible for our own happiness and fulfillment. No one can make us happy. We have to do that for ourselves. So let's love and care for ourselves, for the children of God that we are, and be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can know the will of God and know what is good and perfect and true. 
And once we do that, then we can go out into the world and shower everybody with the blessings and the gifts that only we can give. Thank you, Unity. Know that I love you. God bless. Hi, Unity of Dallas, it is Michaela, and I'm coming to you somewhat live from San Marcos today to let you know what's happening at our church this week. Now, bear with me, we have a lot of classes, but they are really awesome, and they are all on Zoom this week. So, first things first, we have D2 Counseling. They are offering a free counseling seminar, and the subject for it is going to be the 12-step path for families tolerating discomfort along the path of recovery. So if that's something that interests you, it's going to be Tuesday, February 16th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. And D2 Counseling is always an honor to be a part of. They're really great. Then we have the Caregiver Support Group, which is run by our dear congregant, Dottie. And that's also a very good group to go to if that's a community you're a part of. That's going to be Wednesday, February 17th at 10.30 a.m. to noon. Then we have our Men of, Mu our men of Unity who meet pretty regularly and they're going to be talking about healthy habits for joyful living. The date for that's going to be Saturday, February 20th from 10:30 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. so don't miss that. And then we have our Divine Women's Group and they are going to be doing chair and floor yoga led by Monica Clausen. So that's going to be Saturday, February 20th, 11 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. so don't miss that. It's a super unique opportunity. Now for our Soup Mobile, this is something that happens and it's a really good way to reach out and support those in our community. So please go ahead and bring lunch bags past, packed with 16 ounce bottles of water, cookies and chips to Unity on Saturday, 2 to 4 p.m. and that's going to be Saturday, February 20th. Or you can bring them on Sunday, February 21st, before and after the 11 a.m. service. Or Tuesday, February 23rd, at a 8.30 to 10 a.m. There's nothing quite so pure as the magic of childhood. But for the one in 10 children that experience sexual abuse, that magic is taken from them and replaced with a deep sadness and darkness. At Dallas Children's Advocacy Center, we coordinate a heroic team of experts that works each day to help these children illuminate the truth and restore hope in their lives. Our family advocates work to relieve stress and provide support to the children and their families for the entire journey. Forensic interviewers make sure that their story is told fully and accurately so that justice can be served. Our partners, Child Protective Services, law enforcement, the district attorney's office, and pediatric hospitals ensure that their homes and bodies are safe and protected. And our therapists are specially trained to provide free trauma-focused therapy, giving the children and their families the tools they need to heal together and live resilient lives. We each have a responsibility to help protect and rebuild the lives of the children in our community that need it most. It doesn't take magic. It takes you. Help us illuminate the truth at Dallas Children's Advocacy Center. Now for our love bears, that's going to keep going on through the month of February. We love beyond just this month and that's an awesome opportunity where you can have bears sent to us or buy bears and love on them and give them full of all these good healing energy and then bring them to us so we can go ahead and disperse those to children in need so what you can do for that it's going to continue through march 7th you can have them delivered to us by march 5th if you'd like and we will love on them in our congregation regularly to make sure they're all full of love now, as far as next Sunday, it's gonna be the first day of Lent, which is super exciting. So Deb Stovall will be offering wisdom from our co-founder seekers class, and it's gonna be a little bit of Myrtle's musings, if you will. So that's gonna be Sunday, February 21st, from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m., so don't miss that. Very unique class. 
Now, the most important announcement I have for you is SEE week. We're going to have eight classes this round of it and it's going to be so amazing. Our favorite Reverend James is also teaching a class which is going to be on Crucial Conversations, which is at 7 p.m. That's all the announcements I have for you today. As always, we are so grateful for this amazing community and all of these opportunities with classes to come together and grow and learn spiritually. So if you feel called to give, whether it's your time, money, or just energy, please do so. You can text, you can mail in a check, you can go on our website, hit donate, or you, know, you can just send us all of your love and all of your prayers. So with that, I'm going to have you take a deep breath with me. And let's say the offertory blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. It's time to sing the peace song. And sing it like you mean it, brothers and sisters. We just radiate it out, right? and sisters.